So welcome to our online service here at SML, a really big welcome, and particularly if you're new or recently have joined us. Um, it's been a big week, hasn't it? Schools have gone back, finally, and so we do hope and pray that it's been a good week for your children, for your, our young people, and also for the teachers. Well done. And it's also been a very special week for celebrating women. On Monday, it was International Women's Day. Today is Mothering Sunday. And I am so delighted that our guest speaker is Catherine Hill. Catherine is the UK Director for Care for the Family. Some of you will remember that Catherine spoke here uh, just a couple of summers ago. We're really excited that she's gonna be speaking to us. She's also an author and she's recently released her new book, which is called A Mind of Their Own. And it really seeks to equip parents as to how they can nurture resilience and a, an emotional well-being in their children. So it's a, it's a book for these days. In a few moments, we're going to see a video which just gives uh, a tiny insight, a, small, uh, a few small clips into how people's lives are being impacted by the Ministry of Care for the Family. Um, but before that, Fee will pray. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that we can come before you at the start of this service. Lord, thank you that you are with us. And Father, thank you that you see us, you know us, you know each one of us by name. And Lord, at the start, we ask that you would bless each woman who watches, Lord, and who links in today. Mm -hmm. May they know how loved, how precious, how cherished they are by you. And Lord, for all of us, we ask, Lord, would you come and would you meet with each one? Holy Spirit, would you come and fill each one of us up? Mm -hmm. Lord, would you lift our eyes to you? Lord, we're expectant and we're excited by all that you want to do amongst us today. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I lost my uh, first husband, Gareth, in 2013. He had cystic fibrosis. So Ben is like a giant toddler. He's very affectionate and cuddly and enthusiastic. Yeah, straight away knew that there was something different about him. We just knew that, that we were going to um, get married and spend the rest of our lives together. He was unique. He, he was very creative. He was good at anything creative. He's got significant global development delay with autistic traits. And each year that we went to see the, com com the community consultant, they'd add on an extra word into that diagnosis, if you like. When I was eight years old, my brother was six years old, my parents uh, split up. My mum became a single parent overnight, quite literally. And that's really tough. Uh, and that's incredibly difficult. And she is my hero. We never lacked anything as children. She did all she could for us. A friend of mine was signing her daughter up for preschool and we just thought Ben would go to the local school. And then all the other children were running around and playing and I was carrying Ben because he was mobile. But go to go to school where Ben was so clearly so different, non-verbal and not walking around to the other toddlers, that was quite, that was quite traumatic and hard, yeah. Um, I, Well, with cystic fibrosis, he'd often get chest infections, and as the years went on, they'd get more serious. He rang to say, oh, I've been unlucky, um, I've got a chest infection, um, I'm coming home. And actually, it was the most traumatic three weeks of my life. I never want to relive them again. Having cystic fibrosis was not traumatic. The last three weeks of his life was. And the hardest thing I found was having to grieve without him. And he was the one I wanted to talk to about the fact I missed him, and I was going to do this. What did you think of this? And I couldn't, I had to do it on my own. And I had to untangle what was such a beautiful, wonderful thing to be just me. She was told about this relatively new organization. I think maybe Care for the Family had been going maybe five years at the time. So she accessed the support that was available to her. And so I grew up in this family um, where 
care for the family was a part of our family, if that makes sense. You know, the literature was there, the books were there. Um, my mum felt able and uh, to contact for advice and support. Your care for the family was there for my mum when I was a child. When we were preparing for marriage, they were there, and they're still there for us. 18 months after Gareth died, I went on their Care for the Family Widowed Young Support Weekend. And I can't really express the power of being in a room full of people who walk in the tragedy you're walking. And they're very, they're very wise at Care for the Family. I really respect the way they do things. They, they take a lot of details about you, your personality, your grief story. Um, and they really match you up with people who have kind of got things they can relate to. The Care for the Family have recognised that bringing up a child with special needs is hard and can be hard um, and that they want to support that and to be part of that is amazing and rather than thinking I'd like to have a befriender I thought I'd like to become a befriender so Care for the Family has helped me uh, because I'm part of a team of people that, have, that get it that understand what it's like to have a child with special needs and we talk to families with children with special needs um, it's helped me immensely
trust is without borders Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander My faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Savior Spirit
my feet on the rock of your salvation oh I rest my feet on the rock of your salvation Jesus you establish my steps Lord you put a new song in my mouth Good morning. Let's join together as we pray. Heavenly Father, Mother's Day can raise so many different emotions for each of us. Help us now to bring our hearts and our feelings to you as we pray. And Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit to meet with each one of us now.
we all come with different ideas of our mothers and motherhood. We may come giving thanks because we can share today with our mothers. Or we may be feeling sad because we can't see our mothers today. Or possibly we're missing them because they've passed away. Some may not have known their mother and others amongst us may be longing to be a mother. So Lord, we pray, come now and meet each one of us in our individual situations. On Mother's Day, gifts are given and received to honour mothers and motherhood. And we'd love every woman watching or listening, whether you're a mother or not, to receive an individual blessing from God now as we pray. We're going to use some examples of traditional Mother's Day gifts as a framework for our prayers. So first we've got the greetings card. Oh loving Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that mothers teach us, for what, the way that their words affirm us, challenge us and show us love. We pray with thanks for all those that have been homeschooling during lockdown and we thank you that children are now back at school and we pray that this will not delay the roadmap out of the pandemic. And loving Lord Jesus, speak your words of love and acceptance to those who haven't heard it from their own mothers, no matter what the reason. We have the chocolates. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you for the meals that mothers provide. We pray for people today who do not have enough to eat or who struggle to provide good nutrition for their children. We ask that these families will get the help that they need and we thank and praise you for organisations that have provided this essential support. And next we have the toiletries. We thank you for the way that mothers care for us and that that caring continues long after we've flown the nest. We pray today for those who don't feel cared for, for where life is very difficult. We pray for the homeless, for the abused, and for those situations where there's been family breakdown. Lord, please bring hope and change to those circumstances. And we have flowers and plants. As we see the beauty of these flowers, Lord, we thank you for the life and joy that mothers give us, for birth mothers, for adoptive mothers, for spiritual mothers. Lord, thank you for their nurturing, their love and their encouragement as we grow. And loving Lord Jesus, we pray for people who are unwell today, whether physically, emotionally or spiritually. And Lord, we ask for their healing and restoration. So loving Lord, receive our prayers today and pour out your blessings on each one of us. Amen. Amen. Today's Bible reading is taken from Luke, chapter 7, verses 11 to 17. Jesus raises a widow's son. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was carried out the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, 
his heart went out to her and he said, don't cry. Then he went up and touched a beer. They were carrying him on and the bearers stood still. He said, young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk and Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. This news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, I'm Catherine Hill from Care for the Family and I'm so pleased to join you and to have the opportunity to speak to you today as you gather as a church family. And it's great to take part in your series on The Way. As we come this week, we're looking at the reckless compassion of Jesus from that really lovely story in Luke's Gospel that we've had read to us. And it's where Jesus comes to the town of Nain and he raises a widow's son. And we're going to look at that story in the context of the fact that today is Mothering Sunday. Now, of course, we won't all be mothers. And whilst for some, it's a day of celebration. For others, because of the complexity of family life, it's a difficult day. But even if the relationship hasn't been easy, even if our mothers are no longer alive, we've all had a mother and we've all been a child. And perhaps thinking about the role of mothers today is especially poignant in the difficult times that we're living in. I think it's as if the pandemic has held up a a magnifying glass to our family life and relationships. Everything seems more intense. So while the good things may have been strengthened, the pandemic and the experience of lockdown has just made the challenges 100 times harder for many there will have been pressures on our relationships, health challenges, financial hardship, and for many, the trauma and grief of bereavement. Some, I imagine, may even have lost a mother or a grandmother to the virus. And so today may be a sad day for some, a day to look back in gratitude, but a reminder of what's been lost. But it is also a day to celebrate, a day to thank our mothers and those that have a mother's heart in our community. But this season has been really tough uh, for mothers. So many have gone the extra mile in holding families together through the crisis, juggling, homeschooling, homeworking, trying to help with spellings and sums and Shakespeare whilst doing an online shop or answering an important work email. It really is an impossible task. And now with schools going back, there's more adjustment to navigate. But I wrote something for parents in the first lockdown and I thought I'd just read it to you today uh, to remind mothers to lay down any sense of guilt and to remind you what a great job you're doing. So this is what I wrote. You may have heard of the helicopter parent, the snowplow parent, or even the tiger parent. But let me introduce you now to the super parent. Super parents manage to juggle homeschooling and homeworking with joy and ease. They get up early and they do their own exercise routine before their children join them for a family workout. On the fridge is a colour-coded chart with activities and chores for the day that is followed to the letter without arguing. Pandemic parents have enough loo rolls to make a medieval castle or the Roman forum from scratch. They can do fractions, read music, supervise recorder practice whilst answering emails and attending virtual team meetings. Screen time is monitored with no kickback. And a calm relaxed atmosphere encourages teenagers to share their feelings and concerns. Parents, we can't do it all. Teachers have been doing their absolute best, but it's been a a tough time for parents, a, a tough time for mums. No one knows your child like you. No one loves them like you. 
So lay down the guilt and have confidence in your parenting and just get them through. I spoke to one mum last week and she said this. She said, the hardest thing about lockdown has been trying to manage my own emotions. There's been nowhere to hide. She said, I can't tell you the number of times I've locked myself in the loo and had a good cry. And I know she's not alone in that. So as we begin slowly to come out of lockdown, I want to acknowledge the range of feelings that this Mothering Sunday will bring up in each one of us. But I want to particularly thank the mums who are continuing to give of themselves day in and day out. And so it's wonderful that today's passage is about a mother, a mother who's struggling and is at the end of her tether. So Jesus is travelling through the villages and towns and he's proclaiming the kingdom of God. And he's been in Capernaum where he has just healed the centurion's servant. And now here he is travelling with his disciples 25 miles south to the town of Nain. And I wonder if you, can you imagine the scene as they walk along? Um, In the Bible it says this, it says... um, It says his disciples and a large crowd went with him. They had just seen an amazing miracle. They're buzzing with excitement as they approach the town gate where they meet a very different procession coming in the opposite direction. Because it was another large crowd, but this time instead of being full of life and excitement, it's part of a funeral procession. And the crowd are carrying a body out of the city for burial. Now, if we see a a funeral procession today, we generally stop out of respect. Maybe if we're driving, we might pull over. But in Jesus' day, it was different. It was customary for people just to join in the procession. And then in the passage, in verse 12, it says this. It says, a dead person uh, was being carried out. The only son of his mother and she was a widow. Those few words tell a really sad story. This woman had lost her husband. Now she'd lost her only son. And at the time, parents relied on children to care for them in their old age. So this woman, she wouldn't only be lonely, she'd be destitute. The Mosaic law at the time, it provided for widows. And uh, you may well remember, they could glean in the fields after the reapers. But it was the responsibility of the community to care for the poor. And Jesus would have known that. So he could easily have just let that procession pass by, assuming that the town would rally round and help her. But he doesn't do that. So in verse 13, it says this. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her. And then he says two words. That changed everything. He says, don't cry. Jesus saw her tears. He was moved by her pain and her sorrow. The writer to the Hebrews says this. He says, we don't have a high priest who's unable to sympathise with our weaknesses. He knows the things we're going through. He knows our sorrow. And Jesus himself, he knew what it was to weep. He wept at the grave of Lazarus, his friend. In the Psalms, it says, but you, O Lord, see trouble and grief. You you consider it to take it in hand. Now, our youngest son, Henry, is a doctor and he's working on a COVID ward at the moment. And he is seeing so much death and suffering day in and day out. And I often pray that God would protect his heart because it's costly to enter into others' sufferings. But I heard a beautiful story recently of a consultant who's also working on a COVID ward. And like many frontline health workers, he was exhausted. He was caring for a young man of 38 who had a wife and young children. And this man was being ventilated and was seriously ill. And there came the moment And when this doctor realised he couldn't do anything more for this man, his body was shutting down and he knew that he was going to die. And this doctor began to weep. 
but as he wept, the goggles behind his mask just filled with tears. And he said it was like there was this pool of tears. And in the Psalms, David cries out to God and he says, put my tears in your bottle. And when he says that, he's actually talking about there was an ancient custom of putting those precious tears that had been shed in mourning into a, into a little container. And that would be placed in the tomb of the person who died. So if we're worn down by lockdown, if we're struggling for whatever reason, maybe we have our own pool of tears. And God says to us today, as he said to that widow, I've seen your tears They're precious to him. Jesus is a God of compassion. He feels our pain. He cares for us and he wants to comfort us. He's not a cold, distant God. He is a loving, compassionate father who comes and he meets us in our place of need. Now, one of the things I love about this story is that this widow had done absolutely nothing to deserve this act of compassion and love. We don't know anything about her. We don't even know her name. Luke doesn't even tell us what her reaction was to what happened uh, on that day. And it's in such contrast to the story of the uh, centurion's servant who was healed, which you can read in the verses just before. So the centurion, he was a confident, clear-thinking soldier. He was eloquent. He had unquestionable faith. You might remember he says to Jesus, just say the word and my servant will be healed. And that's what happened. But in contrast, this widow is a mess. She's overwhelmed with grief and pain. She doesn't say the right words. She doesn't do the right thing. But Jesus has compassion on her. He notices her. He steps into her situation. He meets her and he says, don't cry. And he does the same for us. We don't have to pray the right prayers. We don't have to do the right thing. But the truth is most of us can get through quite a lot in life just as long as we know that there's someone who cares if we know that we're not alone. But Jesus doesn't just leave her with kind words. He does something else extraordinary. So in the passage, in in verse 14, it says he went up and he touched the coffin. Now, nobody would have done that. Jesus would have made himself ceremonially unclean. And it says in the passage, it says that those carrying the coffin stood still. I imagine they were probably really confused. They They weren't sure what to do. And just imagine at their amazement When Jesus says, young man, I say to you, get up. And the dead man sits up and he begins to talk. And then it says these really beautiful words. It says, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. I think it's as if this whole miracle wasn't so much for the boy who had died. It was for his mother. And so particularly if you're a mother today, but for each one of us, maybe, maybe there are circumstances in our lives where we need that encounter with Jesus. And in that encounter, he has a gift that he wants to give us. Someone once said Jesus ruined every funeral he went to, even his own. And the reason he could say don't cry to that woman was because he knew he was going to change everything. He's the one that conquered death. And my experience and that of so many others is that sometimes some of the most life-changing encounters we have with Jesus are when we meet him as that God of compassion in the tough times of everyday life. I wonder how many testimonies you may have heard of people who've had an encounter with Jesus on that Caribbean holiday as they met the man and woman of their dreams, when their kids came top in the country of their exams, when their business adventure made them millions. We don't, do we? No, the stories we hear are of Jesus reaching out to us 
in compassion, right in the middle of illness, financial disaster, children breaking our hearts, relationship breakdown, unwanted singleness, infertility, depression, anxiety, and loss. Time and time again, people reach out to us at Care for the Family with stories of unbelievable loss. So single parents, parents of children with additional needs, bereaved parents, and those widowed young. And time and again, they tell us of their experience that God is good and that he is faithful and that he can bring that incredible gift of his transforming present, even in the hard knocks of life. The thing is, the world tells us to change our circumstances and to move away from pain. But here we see Jesus step forward with compassion to meet people right in their pain and to give that gift of hope. So often I think we get stuck. We get stuck in the regrets of the past or we spend our, our time thinking ahead to what the future might be like. But the truth is God wants to meet us in the present and even in these tough times. He knows a touch from him can change everything. So the Bible talks about treasures in the darkness. Jesus may change our circumstances like in this story or he may touch our hearts with his reckless compassion, changing our perspective and giving us hope even in the dark times. And this wonderful story then ends um, right at the end, verse 16, it says this. They were all filled with awe and they praised God. They said a great prophet has appeared among us. I wonder, did they remember 800 years earlier, just over the hill at Shechem, Elijah had performed exactly this miracle. He had raised a child from the dead. And they'd no doubt remember the important truth that this is what the Messiah would do when he came. And they said this, God has come to help his people. And this is true for us today. So especially today if you're a mother, but for every single one of us, whatever our circumstances, may we know Jesus as the God of reckless compassion the one who isn't far off, the one who steps into the mess and the challenges of our lives, who reaches out his hand and who says, I've seen your tears, don't cry. I'm the one who's conquered death and today I've come to bring you new life and I've come to bring you the gift of hope. Amen. Still alive.
Just as I am, empty handed bird alive in your hand. Majesty, Majesty, forever I am changed by you. presence 
Well, it's good, isn't it, to gather again this morning and the Lord would have been speaking to each one of us in different ways throughout this service. And, and Catherine, thank you for your inspirational teaching. Thank you for what you shared amongst us. And for anybody who would like to join a Zoom, which is happening straight after the service, that's going to be about 11 o'clock. Liz and John Rolleston are hosting that. And it's for anyone who's got questions on parenting, uh, maybe issues they have, then please do join in that discussion. Um, I think that's going to be a great morning as well. And we're so excited that next Sunday, we're able to welcome you back into our church building for our in-person service so please be logging in to church suite for that be great to see you there and of course our online services will continue as well and let's just close our time together with a prayer so as we prepare to go out into this week as beloved children of god seeking to shine for him and to be salty in the places he calls us to now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace today and forevermore. Amen. Amen.